All right, so we are at the very start of chapter two. We're going to start by describing location in a distribution. And to do that, we're going to start with a term that you may or may not have heard before, which is percentiles. So one way to describe the location of a value, a specific value in a distribution, is to tell what percent of observations are less than or equal to it. So that's the idea behind percentiles. Now the formal definition, we say the pth percentile of a distribution is the value with p percent of the observations less than or equal to it. That's the formal definition of a percentile. So the pth percentile could be the 20th percentile, the 80th percentile, the 95th percentile, whatever that value for p may be. It's got that percentage of the observations less than or equal to it. So let's look at the first example here. It says Jenny earned a score of 86 on her test. How did she perform relative to the rest of the class? And we have the entire class distribution of scores here and a stem and leaf plot. So for starters, let's point to Jenny. Let's pick her out of the group here. She scored an 86, so that must be her score right there. So that's Jenny, and if we count up the number of test scores here, looks like we've got 25 total students in the class. And that means Jenny's score, she was near the top of the class, she'd be ranked 22nd overall if we put the test scores in order. So we can say that Jenny's score is at or above 22 of the class scores. And we can see, on the other hand, there's only three scores in the class that are above hers. So if we calculate Jenny's percentile within her class, we know there's 22 scores less than or equal to hers out of the 25, which has a decimal is 0.88, meaning she's at the 88th percentile. And the next piece here is really just a, sort of a common confusion or a common mistake that students make. It says, what is a percentile? On a test, is a student's percentile the same as their percent correct? And that's a common mistake students make. So let's be really clear about what a percentile is. A percentile measures location in a distribution. It is not someone's score, their percent accuracy on a test. So the next example has to do with Major League Baseball teams and how many wins they have in a season. And specifically, uh, it's the 2009 season. Here is a stem and leaf plot showing the win totals among all 30 Major League Baseball teams. So it says to calculate and interpret the percentiles for the Colorado Rockies, who had 92 wins, the New York Yankees, who had 103 wins, looks like they're actually the number one team in terms of wins, and the Cleveland Indians who had 65 wins. And I'm going to color code these sort of based on those teams' colors. Colorado Rockies will do purple, New York Yankees will do black, Cleveland Indians will do red. So first let's map out where the Rockies were at. They had 92 wins, so it looks like that's them right there, 92 wins. The Yankees with 103, that's easy enough. We've got the Yankees there, they're the top team. And the Indians, 65 wins. Looks like that's the data point right there for the Indians. Although the Indians could just as well be this data point too, since those teams seem to have tied. They both had 65 wins. So for the Rockies, I'm going to abbreviate here, Colorado Rockies, um, they are at or above 25 teams. If we count out from their score down, from their win total down, we've got 25 teams. So 25 out of the 30 total teams in Major League Baseball gives us approximately 0.83 if I round it to two decimal places. So that puts the Rockies at the 83rd 
percentile this distribution. And then as for the Yankees, they are the number one team. So for the New York Yankees, they are at or above all 30 win totals. They have the highest one. So the math behind that, uh, 30 out of 30, 1.0 tells us that they are in the 100th percentile. In other words, the data point for the New York Yankees was the highest value observation in the entire set. All right, and as for our Cleveland Indians, who had 65 wins, we've got to be a little bit careful here. I'm going to abbreviate CI for Cleveland Indians. They are above one, two, three teams, and then there's two teams here at five. So if they had 65 wins, that means they're equal to or greater than five values on this chart. So we've got one, two, three, and then two fives right here. So for Cleveland, 65 wins would put them at or above just five teams, the teams that had 65 wins or fewer. So 5 divided by our total of 30 gives us approximately 0.17 if we rounded two decimal places. So we can say the Cleveland Indians are actually at the 17th percentile of this distribution. All right, so we've talked about the basic definition of what a percentile is, what it represents. Let's move on to the next topic, which is a cumulative relative frequency graph. These graphs are interesting. Uh, it says a cumulative relative frequency graph displays the cumulative relative frequency of each class of a frequency distribution. And that is a really fancy and formal way to say that the percentages will accumulate across the graph from left to right. And we can see that in our first example here. There's a cumulative relative frequency graph shown. So you'll notice the proportions or the percents will always be on the y-axis, starting from 0% and building all the way up to 100%. So the y-axis for these graphs will start at 0 and build up to 100%. The x-axis we'll always have whatever our variable of interest may be. In this case, it's median household income. And you'll notice how this graph builds or accumulates from zero all the way up to our highest value gets to 100%. So the actual example here says, here is a cumulative relative frequency graph showing the distribution of median household incomes for the 50 states and the District of Columbia. So that must mean our x-axis, median household income, would be in thousands of dollars. Part A says California, with a median household income of $57,445, is at what percentile? Interpret this value. All right, so we know the median household income for California. We need to map out the percentile using this graph. So as best I can, I'm going to find approximately their median household income on the x-axis, 57000 and some change. And I'm going to map out, I'm going to draw a vertical line up to this graph and see what percentile that corresponds with on the x-axis. So if I can put my vertical line down here at about $57,000, a little bit more, right? There's my value for California. Map that straight up to the graph. That corresponds with, now I've got to draw a straight line over this way, that corresponds with a percentile at about 80. So it's at about the 80th percentile here for California. So that's a really important skill for this chapter, being able to map out specific percentiles based on a value on the x-axis. And if you're really good at drawing straight lines, your predictions will be even better. So let's interpret this. If California is at the 80th percentile, 
That means that California's median household income is actually greater than or equal to 80% of all states, including D.C., by the way. So let's take a look at part B where it says, what is the 25th percentile of this distribution? What's another name for this value? So now we're going to sort of work backwards from what we did in part A. We're going to start on the y-axis here where the percentages are. And we're going to go from the 25th percentile and map out what the corresponding median household income would be. So as best I can here, I'm going to go to the 25th percentile, find 25% on the y-axis and draw a nice straight horizontal line. And C, I'm gonna draw a line straight down to see what corresponding value that is. Looks like right about $45,000. So the 25th percentile of this distribution is at about $45,000. What's another name for this one? Of course, we learned it in chapter one. Another name for the 25th percentile is Q1, or the first quartile. And then part C asks, where is the original graph the steepest? And what does this indicate about the distribution? So let's take a look at our graph again. The steepest would be like the greatest slope. So for instance, from 35 to 40, it's not very steep at all. The steepest portion would be from about this point, right, this dot, to this dot. Right, that, that is where the graph would be the steepest. So from there to there, approximately. So let's see, it looks like it's from about 45 to that point, which I can map out to be about 55. So the steepest portion of this comes from 45 to 55. You see a big increase from about 25% all the way up to about 75 to 80%. So if we go from the 25th percentile up to the 75th percentile, that's actually the IQR in this case. So homes from about 45,000 up to about 55,000 would represent the middle 50% of the data from the 25th percentile to about the 75th percentile. So the graph is steepest from about $45,000 to about $55,000. So we know where the graph is the steepest. We just saw that. And that was from about the 25% mark to about the 75% mark. So what does that indicate about this distribution? Well, based on our estimation, about half of all the states fall within this interval for the median home value. Another way to say that would be the IQR from the 25th percentile to the 75th percentile. All right, so we talked about percentiles. We talked about cumulative relative frequency graphs. That seems like it should be enough for now. So that is all for these notes. I'll see you in class.